Okay, now, question five and six on this page. These are where we really get going on this, all right? So let's see what we can do with this. Let me give you a little help, okay? So what I do, some teachers call it P's and Q's, M's and N's, I call it B's and C's, okay? So in order to factor this, we had before, up here in number three, we knew that something was a factor, okay? I told you what was. But now we have no factors. We have nothing. If you tried grouping on this one, it wouldn't work, all right? So what we're going to do is this. We're going to find our B's and C's. Okay, now what are B's? B's are all the factors of the back numbers. Okay, so I'm going to put this down. B is the factors of the back number. Okay, I'll explain all this. Don't worry. C's are going to be the factors of the front number. Okay, so you're going to list these out. And then what you're going to find is you're going to find the B's divided by C's, which is the list of possible rational zeros. Okay, again, I'm going to give you a lot more detail, but I'm glad you're watching this now because this is, this is, this is pretty tough. Once you get it, you're fine, but it's pretty tough. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to find the B's first which are all the factors of this back number, this three. So what we're looking at is numbers that divide evenly with no remainder. We talked about that last week. Okay, numbers that divide evenly into three that have no remainder. That would be plus or minus one. Positive one could divide in there. So could negative one divide into three. What also could divide into three? Three as well. Positive three and negative three. So the reason for the plus or minus is that I'm saying positive one, positive three, negative one, negative three. So I actually just wrote down four numbers that divide evenly into there. Okay, now, C's. C's are the factors of this front number. There's a one in front. Okay, so what divides evenly into one? Just plus or minus one. Okay, now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do B is divided by C's. Okay, so I'm going to take each B, 1, and divide it by 1. Well, 1 divided by 1 is still 1, and negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1 as well. So plus or minus 1, and then 3 divided by 1. Again, I'm just taking each B and dividing it by C. You can see where if there's a fraction number, it could be kind of crazy. 3 divided by 1 is 3, and 3 divided by negative 1, negative 3. There is my list of possible rational zeros. And what that means to us is this is our list of guesses. So list of guesses. Okay, we're going to have to guess. We're going to have to guess what actually is a zero. Something from this list is hopefully going to work. Okay, it will. And so what you have to do is you have to actually guess that it might work. So let's guess one. I'm going to go in order here. And I'm looking for a remainder of zero, hoping to get a remainder of zero. Okay, so I'm going to start with one, with my coefficients, one, one, negative five, and three. I'm going to bring down my one. One times one is one, adds to be two. 1 times 2 is 2, adds to be negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, and we got lucky on the very first try. Got a remainder of 0. Okay, that is, that is spectacular news. Okay, now what did it just tell us? What information did we just get? We just got the factors now. Okay, so here are your factors. My first factor is x minus 1. That's coming from right there. I know it's positive 1, and you're thinking, why didn't you put plus 1? But remember, it's got to be the 0 to this that you put in here. So it's positive 1. And then this stuff is my other factor, x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, x squared 
plus 2x minus 3. We bumped it down by one power to get to where we were going. Okay, now, well, big X, what's left here? Negative 3 on top, 2 on the bottom. And we'll see if it can factor more. And this one does, okay, because we can use positive 3 and negative 1. So my factors are x minus 1 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. And we set that equal to 0 because it wants the zeros. And so if I, I, I like to do this mentally, but I'll write it down now for you. Add over 1, x equals 1. We just got one answer. Take the x plus 3, make it equal 0. Subtract over 3. And you're going to have x equals negative 3. There's another answer. And last one, add over 1. And we'll get again x equals 1. That would be a double root. Oh, we've heard of double roots before. Talked about how they bounce off the x-axis. We'll talk about that again when we get there. But there are all your rational zeros, the answers. Okay, let's try that again for number six. These take a while, so here we go. We need the b's and the c's. So b's are all the factors of this back number, all the numbers that divide into 10. You want to be systematic about your list. 1, 2, 5, and 10 all divide into 10, plus or minus. I oftentimes forget the parentheses here, but they're all plus or minus. Positive 1, positive 2, positive 5, positive 10. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 5, negative 10. C's are all the factors of the front number, which is 1, plus or minus 1. Okay, sometimes you have another number there, so you've got to go through it like this. B is divided by C's. If we divide by 1, they're the same list. 1, 2, 5, and 10. Now. When I am guessing, I do not guess the big numbers. I go for the little numbers, positives and negatives. I'm going to try to guess negative 2. Again, it's kind of random that I pick negative 2. I don't know if it works. I, I haven't done this one yet. But I pick for my list. So again, I'm saying don't guess first 5s and 10s. It's usually not the bigger ones. It's usually the smaller ones that work. I'm looking for a remainder of 0. Let's see if we guessed right. So I guess... With negative 2, I'm going to use my coefficients 1, 2, negative 13, and 10. I bring down a 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. That gives me 0. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. That gives me negative 13. I'm not going to even keep going. I know my remainder is not going to be 0. I would need negative 10 here. I'm not going to get it. I'm an unlucky guesser. That didn't work. I'm going to try negative 1 next. So I start over. I've got to do it again. I've got to find one that works. 1, 2, negative 13, 10. I bring down the 1. So we get negative 1 adds to be 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. That's going to give me negative 14, which again is not going to give me 0. That didn't work. Okay, let's try positive 2 now. With 1, 2, negative 13, 10. So I bring down the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, adds to be 4. 4 times 2 is 8. I'm getting, I think I got it, I think I got it, because negative 13 plus 8 is negative 5. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Woohoo! Got a remainder of 0, and that's what I'm looking for. So as soon as I find that, part of the battle is do you understand what you just got? Well, you got the factors. Here are your factors. Well, your factors are, because this one's 2, x minus 2. Again, that's where that comes from. Times, and then this is x squared plus 4x minus 5. Okay, there are your factors. Now, you want to try to factor this back part using a big X. Negative 5 on top, 4 on the bottom. So you're going to need, let's see, 5 and negative 1 to make it work. And so now your factors are x minus 2, the one that we got originally, and then x plus 5, and x minus 1. There are your factors. So now, 
what are the zeros, because again, it wanted to solve, so it wanted to set equal to zero. And again, I'm going to set these equal to zero mentally, add over two, x equals two. Subtract over five, x equals negative five. Add over one, x equals one. And we got it. Those are our answers. And with that, we're going to call it a day. Uh, we got a lot of work to do in class on this, and we will. All right, guys, see you next time.